As some of you may be aware, a little indie title called No Man's Sky by Hello Games was released for PC on Friday the 12th of August at 7pm UK time. We went straight on Twitch after the download for the first two hours of gameplay to see what it's all about and get a good impression of its procedural generation with the planets, universe, and 18 quintillion things that may or may not be made up, because we'll never know how many planets there actually are. But we're going to go over what happened, what we learned, what we all feel No Man's Sky needs, and what may become a really repetitive experience after several hours of gameplay. So straight out of the gate we hit the options menu. Now, field of view on PS4 cannot be changed, its default is at 60 or 70, something like that, and it is horrible, as PC players would feel rather sick playing with that field of view. I managed to change it to 100 field of view, thankfully on PC we can change the field of view. There is also all resolution settings, FPS limiters, which I thought was stuck at 30, but you can actually change it to unlimited or maximum FPS. I kept my settings at medium for the most part because I didn't know how it would run. For me, myself, the game ran fine. A couple of little hiccups when the game first started up and I started playing. Every five minutes or so, I'd have a little FPS peak. Uh, down to maybe 10 FPS and then back up to what it felt like 60 FPS. I didn't have an FPS counter up, but it felt like a good solid 60 FPS. On stream though, people were complaining of every now and then a solid five second freeze every now and then that I was not experiencing. Obviously you will see that in this footage now that I recorded live from the live stream that has no pauses in it for that long period of time. No Man's Sky, for the most part, ran very nicely. There was no issues, really. I did have to restart the game once applying my required settings that I wanted, field of view, etc., mouse sensitivity, and you do have to hold the mouse button to apply these settings to exit the game. It's in the options menu, which is a little bit confusing. A lot of people were saying in chat, how the hell do we exit the game? So I had to show them all on stream. It's, uh, it's not very well laid out, and a lot of people have said it doesn't hold your hand very well, or at all, in fact. The beginning of the game, you have to figure everything out yourself. You have to figure out what your ship needs, what you need to make things for your ship, and everything else. You need to find out yourself what you need for your exosuit, which would be the isotopes, and also for your gun or your weapon, your mining tool, which you can upgrade over time. You also need certain resources to upgrade your gun, and then you also need certain resources to charge up the attachments that you've just upgraded for your gun that you also needed those resources for, all of which it doesn't really help you with. You can press C on the keyboard on PC version to scan the area, which does give you a little indication of where certain items are by a logo, but that doesn't really give you the exact resource you may need. Some resources do share a similar logo, so sometimes you will think you found plutonium when in fact you found carbon. On the plus side though, everything does have its individual look. For instance, plutonium, it took me ages to find some, but when I found it, it was big spiky red crystals. I then remembered what it looked like, so whenever I see it, I made sure to get it, as that is fuel for our ship, and if we don't have plutonium, we ain't leaving the planet. But before we leave the planet, we did get to see some creatures. Now this is all procedurally generated the same as the planets and the universe itself, and the animals for the most part were quite entertaining. There were some nice variations on each planet of what we managed to see. On certain planets, there would be all very friendly animals that would show me where things were when I fed them. On another planet there was a little T-Rex with wings and a scorpion tail that immediately tried to rape my ass as soon as it seen me land on the planet. Luckily by that time I did upgrade my gun for the bolt firer which uh, was really handy at that moment in time as the mining tool does not kill creatures that I found. But with that being said there are many upgrades you can do to your weapon it's just choosing the right ones as the inventory space for No Man's Sky is rather small. You'll always find that you'll either transfer a lot of equipment to your ship's inventory or be throwing out a lot of resources to make room for resources you actually need. The inventory itself is actually quite confusing at first. It took me a good hour before I got the handle of things and managed to go quickly through my inventory, upgrade things, repower things, swap things from one inventory to the other, get my ship repaired, and uh, vice versa. You need to click onto the empty inventory slots to select a new item to craft. I did not realize this until somebody in chat that already played the game said, uh, Falcon, you need to click on the empty inventory space and it says craft and did you click on the craft button and you crafted that new slot. I was trying to right click on the resource and get a craft menu up from that, you know, use iron to craft plates for, for my ship to repair, but that's not the way you do it. You do it the opposite of how you would usually think you do it in other games, which is kind of confusing at the start, but you get used to it. I guess a good thing is it's different. It's a new experience in a way. So that was kind of nice once I got used to it. It's fresh, a fresh little take on things. And uh, of course, once we got the ship fixed, we left the planet. Starship launch. Let's get the hell out of here.
Look at that. System. Trace Kodeka system. Euclid Galaxy. You discovered this on the 12th of the 8th, 2016. Planet Septicon 1. She's a beaut. And, uh, oh, let me just say, I cannot fault the flight mechanics at all. Leaving the planet, leaving the surface, after we've given them the names that we wanted and the animals. Oh, when the first time you leave that, that atmosphere and you take a look at the vast space and asteroids that you can also mine, other ships and space stations that you could go and visit. It tells you a distance away the other planets are and space stations and beacons. You can go into warp drive and blast your way towards them and go straight through asteroid fields and dodge them things and everything there's a lot out there in space but it is a big big area and there will be big areas where you won't see nothing i did get the pre-order bonus of a new ship which i didn't unpack because i heard there was the possibility of a bug so it would have maybe messed up my game so i left my bonus ship in there until i'd got further than what i am now so i will probably get a video of the bonus ship done and see what it performs like and maybe get into some space battles for a future video but for the most part this will be a quick first impressions of the first two hours of gameplay which i was rather impressed with all the procedural generation of course the animals the creatures you'll find all looking different you'll have different packs of animals babies adults and they would all be scanned differently by pressing the f key you could also zoom in on distant animals if it was maybe hostile so you didn't have to get attacked different planets which were really nice looking at different colored planets at a distance and then getting up close and realizing it's not what you expected it was kind of green at a distance you got close and it was water it wasn't plants and it wasn't foliage it was just a water planet that had some weird creatures on it that looked like they would just rip you apart in seconds so you don't pl you don't bother to land on it because you're scared you're worried for your life you just want some plutonium to just get get somewhere safe and nice there's all these beautiful things with no man's sky but then you begin to realize how long will this last how how quick will you how quickly will this become a repetitive experience that you're just going to become frustrated with and bored with? I did feel a great amount of relaxation playing it. You know when Minecraft was a big thing and, and back in the day when everybody played Minecraft there was relaxing music and you'd go tunneling down with some friends, uh, which is another thing we'll get to with No Man's Sky, playing with friends, and you just relax and chill playing Minecraft, building stuff. I get that feeling with No Man's Sky, but a completely different experience because it's, it's so much... It's vast, it's something we've probably always wanted with a game that Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen are attempting to do right now, but uh, currently obviously still in development, and AAA titles also, but No Man's Sky seems to be doing it, yes, on a more uh, arcade less simulation way, but uh, it's, it's done it very well in the way that everything is different. Uh, you, you'll very rarely find the same thing twice on a different planet, or the same kind of planet twice, or with a different atmosphere, there's different weather effects, uh, sandstorms, rainstorms, and, and vice versa, acid rain, acid clouds, you'll get poison, you'll get hot, you'll get cold, uh, it's very nice, but why can we not do it with friends? I asked this question in chat while we streamed this for the two hours, I said, it's all well and good, but what it needs is co-op. Who here is not buying the game because it doesn't have co-op? You can't hook up with a friend in your ships, fly around together, get in combat together, explore planets together, protect each other together. Who is not buying it because you can't do that? Literally everybody in the chat said they are not buying it because you cannot play it with friends. In 2016, a game that you cannot play with your friends on this scale, this would be a completely different conversation if this was co-op. If you could jump in this with friends, which I know 10 times more people than I know would have bought it if it had co-op, I would enjoy this game so much more if I could say, get one of you guys and say, right, you got no ice guy, you want to play, you want to play? Right, I found this really nice planet. You could put, squad up in the menu, go in and you'd appear in my base or whatever, or on my flag I'd put down. Say, oh yeah, spawn on this, uh, I've called it, I've called it Billy Bob Planet. Click that checkpoint, you spawn there with me. It will spawn there and then we'll go from that planet to explore, yeah? And we go and name stuff, survive stuff, protect stuff. You can attack stuff while I'm gathering resources and defend me and vice versa. So much more entertainment, so much more life longevity to the game but there is no multiplayer as far as we know yet they may be added in the future of course there's all this controversy uh, with sean murray saying you can play with friends there is multiplayer but it's very slim that you'll see somebody 
and then now there is it, the, the tweet of uh, it's not my players that's what you're going for uh, d don't expect that experience or uh, you know contradictions all over the place I don't like to get involved in it you know don't know don't know the game's beautiful it's a it's an achievement you know with this uh, calculations and mathematics and uh, sciencey stuff it's all a wondrous thing but why not multiplayer it would be, it'd be, it'd be a different league it would be a different league if it had multiplayer that's all I'm saying triple a price is it worth it Without multiplayer, I'd say no. I think it should be half its price. Shouldn't be a $60 game. Should be probably $30, $40 game at most. Uh, it's an indie title after all. Um, shouldn't be sold for a AAA title uh, price. It's not got multiplayer. Yes, it is a procedurally generated, limitless, essentially, world. End game being found in the middle of the galaxy. Some people have done that in a very short amount of time. People have found each other but not seen each other because multiplayer does, uh, does not work. It shouldn't be that much. I think it should be a lot less. If you're really into space exploration and you don't mind not having multiplayer, go for it. I think it's a brilliant game. If you, if you like going and exploring uh, creatures and discovering creatures, uploading your findings for other people to find, that is an amazing idea. Completely original thing that I think is wonderful for those that may like it. Finding plants and ecosystems and different things on different planets. Amazing. Amazing stuff. But if you want multiplayer, this ain't where it's at. We'll keep an eye on it. If multiplayer comes, I'll be sure to let you know first thing here, as I'm sure everybody else will as well. But for now, make your decision on some video streams. Maybe watch that. If this doesn't make your mind up for you on this video, do apologise. I will get some more gameplay and show you some more things in the future. But for now, I hope this review helps you out in any way that I possibly could. I'll leave you with some gameplay to finish the video off. And I'll see you peeps next time. Right. Starship. I don't think... Have I got any? Install technology. Combat focus weapon used for... Uh, it uh, is advised that isotope elements such as carbon are required to recharge the device. Okay, that's the shooty one then, I guess. Right, so I can shoot now. But first, let's get the hell out of here. Bloody gassy, this planet, isn't it? All this green gas coming off here. Yeah, there's a nice blue one we want to go to over there. Oh no, that's Planet Septicon. That's the one we came from. The green planet. Uh, it's good with uh, renaming them, I guess. We know what's what. Planet Sparhawk. There we go. So it's that one there we need to go to. Nice little yard at eight. Well, let's go. So it's definitely a very chill game. But there is combat as well, so. Beautiful. Ah! Die, you fucker. It's like a mini T Rex. A fucking little T Rex on this planet. Hey, there's plutonium though. Oh, he's aggressive. He's a carnivore. It's a planet full of carnivores, man.
Bu krem. <gülüyor>